Okay, welcome to another Pike and Shot battle. This time we have the English 1543 versus Danes 1543. Um, so both armies are in a transitional state here. The Danes have started using uh, more raiders to supplement their lancers, and their infantry consists of mostly arquebusiers and uh, pikemen in large blocks, but also they're still using their select levy, which is half crossbow and half heavy weapon. Um, so basically late medieval militia. Uh, my army, the English army 1543, is only slightly evolved from the earliest available English list. We no longer have armored dismounted uh, men at arms with heavy weapon. And we do have some more gunpowder troops available. So let's look at our options. We have no light infantry options, but we do have options for light cavalry. Mounted arquebusiers, some in armored carbine, no melee capability. Probably end up taking them. Uh, light lancers, unarmored light lancers, swordsmen, the standard harassing light cavalry. For non light cavalry, we have a few choices to make demo lancers. Average light lancers, kind of terrible. Late gendarmes, so heavily armored, heavy lancers, horse. They're only average though, so they tend to fail cohesion checks. Raiders are also only average. They are uh, shooting pistol and melee pistol. Um, they're good for holding a box of pikemen, running down missile troops, but I'm not sure that they're worth 78 points. And gendarmes. These are basically medieval style knights, fully armored superior heavy lancers. Uh, for artillery, we can get either light or medium guns. For non light infantry, um, we have again quite a few choices. We can get Lanzanet mercenaries, so a gigantic block of 2,000 pikemen and halberdiers. We could get billmen and longbowmen. So 2,000 men, half with bow and sword, and half with bill. Basically, these are horrible. They're just completely terrible. Um, heavy weapon gives no impact POA against cavalry, so they can be charged with some success by good heavy horse, but more importantly, they have no pikemen. So in a melee against a unit such as a Lancex, they, they just get shredded, completely bowled over. They need rough ground to survive against such troops, and unfortunately, there is not very much rough ground to be seen here. I could also get the even more terrible militia abilement and longbowmen, the difference being that they are now raw, and as opposed to some men armored, they are unarmored, and the archers are no longer graded as swordsmen. Ouch. Uh, we also can get masked arquebusiers and longbowmen. And these longbowmen are still graded as bow swordsmen. By the Elizabethan army list, the longbowmen no longer get graded as swordsmen even. So this is going to be difficult because the Danes get access to more of these pikemen than we do. Um, I think cavalry harassment will be key. And I will take any lancers I can get my hands on. In fact, I think I'll take any cavalry I can get my hands on, even the ones that I don't think are really worth it. So I think we'll form up here, more or less, with one flank anchored on this rough. One flank will be more or less open, but held by light cavalry. And we'll shove some uh, arquebusiers and longbowmen in this forest. Probably grab an additional unit of longbowmen um, and then I will need to fill out the line with some billmen and longbowmen. So this English army is kind of out of date and terrible but it is fun to play with so that'll do. Okay and deployment. This really is a terrible army but it is fun, so that's good enough, I suppose. 
All right, based on the number of units we have, we need to decide whether we want to deploy here to here or like here and here. I think here to here is probably the better choice. Something of that sort. We'll want our light horse on both flanks. I think I'll want raiders in the center supporting the billmen and longbowmen. Along with our gendarmes. Um, then our actual cavalry wing, I think, can actually just uh, hang out back here and they can shift to whichever flank they're needed at. So we'll try to harass with our light cavalry and see if we can get them to move forward and then fight a defensive action with our horrible, horrible billmen and longbowmen, um, screened somewhat by cannons and archers and archivisiers. They really are an awful unit. Um, I mean, they can cut up, you know, masked musketeers or longbowmen, and if they survive impact against cavalry, they do just fine, but in melee against a pike block like this, they just get completely steamrolled, and if they get flank attack, they collapse as well. So they're kind of awful. All right, let's see his deployment. Three units of Lancets to our two. It's not terrible. The Select Levy, Massed Arquebusiers, Gendarmes, Late Gendarmes, Demo Lancers, Arquebusiers and well-sighted heavy guns that will be unpleasant for our cavalry. But I think no light cavalry, which is great. We're going to spread our light cavalry out and try to get around both flanks. Pull these gendarmes back. Occupy this rough ground with the longbowmen. And these billmen and longbowmen I could perhaps put here, ready to either assist these units against the select levy, or head into the forest to take cover against the um, heavy cavalry. And hopefully our light horse will be able to take care of his light foot and guns. Next turn. Good start. That's a problem. It might disrupt the rest of our cavalry. There's not really anything we can do about it. So we can only hope that they hold. 
they don't, we'll pull them back and put other units in their place. All right. Next turn. Oh no. That's a great start to the battle. Ugh. All because I stupidly forgot that those guys were there. Well, we can't fight both lit arquebusiers and gendarmes with just light cavalry. So we'll ride past. I think I'll need to shift cavalry to the left to make up for that loss. We have two units of late gendarmes. I think I will shift two units of horse in that direction. Hopefully, well, we might lose one more unit, to be honest, before we can overrun these guns. Okay, which cavalry unit does he target next? Oh, maybe the infantry. That's fine, we'll just peel off and have distracted a couple units. Quite a few units. I mean, I would like to get to the guns, but if all I do with the lights is turn a bunch of units around, well, that's good too. Hmm. Good for now. Next turn. Really don't don't like that situation. I only hope that we break this unit before the heavy horse charges us. They frag, so we probably will break them before we can get hit by the heavies. Okay, that takes care of the medium guns. That takes care of the heavy guns. So now these light lancers can do what? Just get behind them in general and prepare to be annoying. Let's 
fine. It's pretty ineffective no matter what. Let's protect our guns. Ah, damn. Our longbows might get disrupted here. I think I will push my own pikemen to confront his pikemen and get my billmen and longbowmen to the right. Get the demi lancers in the rough so that if they do engage the gendarmes, they'll lose more slowly, but they can be ready to intervene. That I think is good for now. Next turn. Ugh. To put up with one more round of fire from those guns. Good, we avoid their late gendarmes. Oh, those damned guns. Right, we can now... Mm, not quite threaten their flank, unfortunately. Ah! Too bad. The Raiders have no impact capability, so they will have a very tough time against gendarmes on impact, although in melee they are superior as a pistol as opposed to swordsmen, but being only average, they're fairly likely to fail a cohesion check. And we got Arquebusiers and Select Levy. Good. Our Billmen and Longbowmen will have to do their best here. Goodbye. Goodbye. You have both caused me a great deal of trouble. All right. Do I move you? Mm, I think no. Hmm. It's a little bit ugly, but it's far too early to say who's going to win. Next turn. Oh. 
<laughs> Ouch. Well, goodbye. Just in time. Good. Luck is with us. Not there, but, you know. Oh, even better. Even better. That really could not have worked out better. Um, right. So, no to you. Yes, yes, yes. Goodbye. And longbowman. Perfect. Yeah, so artillery caused negative cohesion modifiers regardless of the casualties inflicted. So it's always good to cause some casualties with musketry, or in this unusual case, archery, and then throw in some cannonballs. Charge in, cause the break, they disrupt, good, then we can charge in here, uh, so it's heavy weapon is our only impact capability and it's 50%, so it's 50% heavy weapon for impact, um, and then under melee our swordsman comes into play from the longbowmen. And overlappers is when you have units of swordsmen or heavy weapon that are larger than the enemy unit, you get an extra 15 POA. So, yes please. So, the select levy is half crossbowmen, half halberdiers. So they're only at 50 POA in the melee. And so, to be fair, their armor would help them. Let's see. Ah, plus 50 against less well-armored opponents, which my longer than are. So we'd be in, at completely even terms in the melee, and they would have 50 impact POA, which we did not have. So we're going to keep lurking in this forest until our light cavalry support arrives, which, to be fair, it's on its way. Yeah, Light Lancers are a great buy. Okay, next up. It's unfortunate, the Gendarmes are going to just crush our Demo Lancers. Oh well. We'll advance our Billmen and Longbowmen. And next turn we'll charge into contact. Uh, so in Pike and Shot, the zone of control works differently from Field to Glory. This unit can be charged. It is directly to the front, facing within 45 degrees. Um, and the primary zone of control can extend uh, two tiles orthogonally. And there's also like a priority targeting system. Um, it's hard to learn. People find it confusing, but I do like it. It's just a different take. Okay, onward. Next turn. Good. Excellent. Oh, interesting choice.
Good. Need the checks? No, they all pass. Oh well. You should shred these slug levy though. Right, so they have no melee capability because we have a pike kale, which is steady, so it cancels out. So we get 100 POA for that, and overlappers because 12% of the formation is halberdiers or uh, zweihunders. So they're kind of lapping around this formation because they have more men as well. So I'm hoping for them to fail that. Wow, so fragmented gendarmes versus steady demolancers. We only have a 27% chance to win. Here's another thing. Um, they have 50 melee POA for heavy weapon, although they do, they do not get their um, 50 POA for armor because my men are all armed with arquebuses, which they are, you know, presumably some portion of the unit is loading and firing while the melee is ongoing. And with both units disordered, even if we end up in melee, we would only lose quite slowly. So with worse melee units, hide them in the forest. Let's see if we might not engage here. No. Okay. Yeah, once again, our uh, billmen are armored, but it doesn't matter because they have arquebus. Wheel about, throw in some arrows. The firepower of these massive units of billmen and longbowmen is incredibly poor because most of the men are in back and can't see anything to shoot with. Right, so this is a perfect setup for taking care of this kind of unit. We have them zone of control locked by the raiders who can fire their pistols. We have longbowmen set up to contribute still more firepower and artillery for the extra cohesion check and a few casualties. They still hold, but all they can do is charge this unit, which will fall back. Things might get kind of hairy when this unit of late gendarmes breaks, it could spread panic, but at the very least, we are slowing this expensive unit down. Just a little bit of support. I think we'll stand here. I don't think pushing him would do any good, and if they're forced to engage us, it'll waste their time while we win the infantry battle. And just keep being annoying. No use for this artillery yet, we'll wheel them left to start dealing with this situation. Okay. Okay. There we go, our obsolete pile of garbage has defeated his obsolete pile of garbage. Uh, yeah, so as you can see with the uh, Tudor English army, it's really key to use terrain. Uh, much of the army is quite squishable, and you know these longbowmen and 
Billman and Longbowman and Arquebus series cannot hold without forests or rough ground to hide in. And White Horse is also extremely useful. Uh, he also perhaps sent too many units or turned too many units around to try to deal with them. Um, bringing your own Light Horse or just ignoring them tends to be the way to go. Of course, when you bring artillery, it's harder to ignore them. Now, that artillery did score some early damage, but ultimately his artillery, I think, uh, broke a single unit, and then he lost both units. So the trade-off was worth it for me. Um, yeah, I, I really like this English army. It's really interesting. It's a period of history I find really fascinating. Um, the army list after this one has uh, Elizabeth and Foot, and they're 2,000-man units of pikemen, billmen, longbowmen, and gunmen. Uh, just a really interesting transitional time. Definitely not a uh, top-notch army list, though. But yeah, good game to my opponent, and until next time.